This episode of Weekly Weird News is sponsored by Bespoke Post and by Factor. Now look, we're not wrong about much, but time and time again, we are proven dead wrong about our dismissiveness towards that guy on Twitter back in 2019 who asked just how exactly he's supposed to kill the 30 to 50 feral hogs that run into his yard within three to five minutes while his small children play. Yeah. We laughed. We oh, all had a great time. So silly. And then we've spent the last couple of years just apologizing. Eating least, our words. Just, yeah, once every three months probably. Just feasting on crow. Yes. So that question was posed in the midst of one of this country's recurring public debates about guns. They all kind of blend together at this point. And the implication was that the only way to stand even a chance of uh, protecting one's family against the feral hog menace was via an AR-15 rifle, which, as we all know, stands for Assault Rifle 15. Yes. It's, it's the 15th assault rifle to be invented. Exactly. Uh, but there I go again, making a, a big old joke out of what is clearly a serious and potentially deadly problem. Yeah, not even a good joke at that. Because all you're doing is triggering people in the comments who are very angry yeah, at well, you getting the name of their weapon wrong. I'd say that makes it a pretty good joke. <laughs> oh, he's done it! That bearded man has pissed me off once again. Uh, so yeah, we, we really goofed on the feral hog issue and have been proven wrong over and over again as more news emerges of hogs just terrorizing unsuspecting people around the world. I mean, hell, they've gotten so brazen that they're even going after celebrities now. They have no qualms at all. And if you're wondering just where exactly you might be able to escape the feral hog menace, you might have reached the conclusion that the ocean is the last safe refuge from these ravenous creatures, given that they are land animals. Um, but apparently you would be dead wrong. Yeah, so The Guardian's recurring experience column has been a great source of content for this show in the past, as it covers very unusual or surprising things that have happened to people, told in the first person. Most recently, we looked at an article back in April titled, Experience, I Opened the World's Largest Penis Museum. And the content just writes itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, the experience column, it's truly a bottomless source of weird news. And their most recent entry, Experience, I was attacked by a wild boar while surfing. <laughs> is right up our alley. Uh, so let's take a look. I was worried about the sharks, and that's why I let my guard down to the yeah. feral hogs. Yeah, everyone, you're, you're spending all of your energy looking for those dorsal fins. Nope. Yeah. Nope. Should have seen the tusks coming. The sharks were just a diversion for the real threat. So this article is written by a woman named Ingrid uh, Seepel, who spends the first few paragraphs explaining that she's a lifelong surfer who grew up in Hawaii and was actually one of the first girls to take up surfing where she grew up. She went on to surf and live in various parts of the world, but eventually made her way back to Oahu. In December 2021, she and a friend drove out to a surf spot on Oahu's north shore at the crack of dawn, and it was a pretty calm day on the beach, with barely anyone else out in the water. They had it to themselves. Yeah. Doesn't get much perfect than this. But that's when the boar incident happened. Let's let Ingrid tell the rest of the story. I began surfing the waves, then saw something floating towards me. I wondered if it was a seal, but it looked stiff. Suddenly, it lifted its head out of the water. I was eye to eye with a wild boar, only 1.5 meters from me. It was shocked, and so was I. It had a bloody face as if it had been attacked, the longest snout with tusks like a baby mastodon, and a look of desperation. I was afraid, and more than that, surprised. What was it doing here? It started piggy paddling towards <laughs> me with all of its might. I turned to paddle away, but its face was at my foot. I got off my board and placed it between us as a safety barrier. The pig pulled itself up and took a chunk out of the board with its teeth. I swam underwater in the other direction, and when I surfaced three meters away, I realized it had broken through the fiberglass casing of the board and crunched through the foam. There was a giant bite mark. That could have been me. This is so much like a shark attack that it's, it's scary. Yeah. It like, oh my gosh, Did, was it one of the great whites? No, it was a fucking hog. It was a hog. Yeah. A surfing hog. A desperate hog who's trying to keep its head above water. It's trying to get pitted. Now, would it have been funnier if it made its way onto the board out of desperation and then surfed back to shore, stranding Ingrid out? That boar stole my surfboard. And did a cool fucking trick. Yeah. I mean, they that boar stole that woman in Rome's groceries. Mm -hmm. They just surrounded her like, all right, it's you or the groceries. Decide. And she just tossed them her groceries and got away. So Give the hog what it wants. They are not above larceny. Uh -huh. well, luckily, Ingrid managed to get the hell out of the water and away from the boar because... It wasn't just the boar's tusks that she was dealing with. The boar was also bleeding everywhere and potentially attracting sharks. Uh, but if you've ever, ever actually held a surfboard, it's not something that you or I could take a bite out of. Uh, our teeth would shatter before anything happened to that board. So it's terrifying to think of what might have happened to Ingrid if the boar had managed to get its teeth on her. 
It's also not, just not something you expect to happen. Uh, this boar clearly was relying on the element of surprise and confusion to claim its victim, and things could have easily gone much worse. So the next time you're down at the beach this summer, just remember, a feral hog could be lurking out there, waiting to take a big, tasty bite out of you. And that's why no one should ever surf without a AR-15 strapped to their back. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to deal with the 30 to 50 feral hogs that step into the ocean within three to five minutes of me trying to get pitted? I mean, would it look really cool to be surfing a big wave and also firing a semi-automatic weapon while doing so? Yes. Yes, that would look really cool. It would be badass. Is it good for the surrounding environment and anyone in your path? No. No. Is it safe? No. Absolutely not. No. But is surfing safe? That's true. These are risks. That's true. Yeah. Sometimes you have to deal with a shark. Sometimes you have to deal with a hog. Yeah. That's why I liked growing up in Florida, where the only thing you had to worry about really was the gentle giants known as the Florida manatee. Yeah. The big, dumb fucking cows just floating, floating their life away. Harmless, adorable, big, giant manatees. Yeah. They're great. But yeah, the hogs are out in the ocean now. The nowhere is safe. It's like, uh, I remember when we found out that moose can, uh, moose are routinely seen out in the uh, middle of like lakes up north. Yeah, well, they can they're they only stand up. Their only natural predator is uh, orcas. Yeah, they can only, they, well, they're like so gigantic that they can just stand up. Yeah, or float, I don't know. So that would be scary too. Moose, very scary. Are the, Moose are apparently buoyant, I guess. Yeah. But uh, I know that they're really tall, so they can just walk on water. They're like a... Like a hippo is not tall, but it just like scoots around yeah. real easy. Yeah, the hippo's got a whole system figured out to uh -huh. get over what looks like shouldn't be possible. Exactly. Animals, they've been around a long time. They've figured this shit out. Yeah. Yeah. Like, wow, these rivers and everything are getting a lot, a lot more shallow. Weird. Anyway, with that boar news out of the way, we can now move on to our regularly scheduled right-wing news roundup. Yeehaw! <laughs> <laughs> Leave that in. Uh, yeah. Starting with some very shocking news out of Truth Social, the social network created by none other than Donald Trump himself. Unlike Twitter and Facebook, which both banned Trump and routinely censor and shadow ban right-wingers for daring to question the, the woke moralists, Truth Social is all about free speech. Yeah, that's right. You can do whatever the hell you want on here. Or at least that's how it was pitched. It, of course, became clear very quickly after launching that Truth Social was not a free-for-all, and there were actually many ways to get banned or censored, like <laughs> by acknowledging the January 6th hearings, for example. I was just, just bringing those up. Nope. Or just if you're just doing a little bit of trolling. Uh, the victims of this censorship have mainly been left-wingers, though. Uh, it, so for the truth social target audience, this free speech has continued to flow. I can say whatever the hell I want. But not always. Here's the Daily Beast. Claims of censorship are flying on Donald Trump's alternative social media platform, Truth Social. The main point of contention among users is that Trump's site continues to apply sensitive content notices, obscuring some posts, including a popular anti-Biden meme that mocks the president over increasing inflation rates. Quote, this content may not be suitable for all audiences, the notice states. That content warning has also covered up a popular graphic depicting Jesus Christ and a quote from the Bible with a gray filter leaving users fuming. Truth Social loves censorship, one user wrote, whose bio on the site included the hashtag no more rhinos. Another pro-Trump user, Ultra Maga Peanut, responded on the platform that Truth Social should be embarrassed over this censorship. Sadly, I see so many innocent posts that are marked as sensitive, the user at Sammy Risley wrote. It is almost as bad as Twitter, a further MAGA-loving user declared. Thought Trump was all about the truth, another user exclaimed. None of those things, by the way, would probably be, be on... Twitter's, like, censored. Yeah, you can post as many Jesus quotes as you want uh -huh. on Twitter. They don't care. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, obviously this is a big shame. Sometimes it'd be your own president. The biggest rhino of all was Donald Trump himself. Uh -huh. Damn it. Uh, anyways, in other news, the right wing just continues to be censored, of course. One American News, a.k.a. OAN, has become the news source of choice for people who think Fox News is far too left wing. But OAN is in some pretty serious trouble after being dropped by those Woke moralists at yet another cable company after previously being dumped from, uh, by DirecTV a few months back. Again, here's the Daily Beast. Verizon Fios, currently the largest pay TV platform still carrying OAN, announced on Thursday afternoon that it had been unable to come to terms with the network's owners on a new agreement and would no longer carry the channel after this month. 
Quote, our negotiation with OAN has been a typical business as usual carriage negotiation like those that routinely happen between content distributors and content providers. These negotiations were focused on economics as they always are, but OAN failed to agree to fair terms, a Verizon spokesperson said in a statement. Since we were unable to reach an agreement effective July 31st, 2022, we will no longer have the rights to provide our customers with this programming and it will be removed from the Fios TV lineup. The statement continued. Okay, so they're not actually being censored. They just failed to make a deal, which is sad, considering how important deal making is to their god emperor. The best deals. Uh, if we had to guess, OAN asked Verizon for more money than Verizon was willing to give them based on their viewership metrics. And the reason they probably asked for more money is that their business is currently just bleeding money. Apparently, after losing DirecTV, OAN was only pulling in around $550,000 a month in carriage fees from pay TV providers, which is... It's a lot of money, but not much money when you're running a 24-hour news network. But now that they've lost Verizon, the revenue is going to be uh, much, much lower. Very, very low. What I think happened yeah. is they probably went in and they were like, look, you're going to be the exclusive home of OAN. All of those people who we're have just be, lost. We're, we're going to be shouting it from the mountaintops. These guys, they're the only ones brave enough to uncensor OAN. They're like, Ugh. Okay, well, can you not do any of that? Yeah. Like, you're not getting enough views, like, oh, first of all. It's free advertising. Ah. Yeah, second of all, like, the idea... Well, I mean, it, it could be possible that they actually brought subscribers over from DirecTV, but, like, probably not enough to where Verizon wants to be seen as, like, the people harboring this Listen, channel. We got a lot of channels. <laughs> we, <laughs> many, many channels. We don't want to pigeonhole ourselves in any, like, you know, one thing or this. Yeah, also, uh, I'm sure Fox News has a little bit of weight to throw around, too, where they're like, look, Fox News hates competition. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, apparently in terms of cable, OAN is now only going to be available to subscribers of General Communications, Inc., which is in only around 100,000 households all in Alaska. Okay. Uh, they also have an app that costs $5 a month. Uh, and according to their website, it's also on two digital platforms, uh, one called Vidgo, and another one called Cloud TV with a, with a K. We assume both of those are real, but I don't know. Yeah. Uh, also, the, apparently you can get... Uh, you can get OAN uh, at pretty much any U.S. military base in the U.S. plus Ramstein Air Base in Germany. Which they, is, they have an air base uh, named after the band. Uh, yeah, that's cool. They, they named it after the band. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean they are you know one of the biggest cultural ambassadors of the country of Germany. So thank you, U.S. military. Yeah. So yeah, I mean uh, OAN's not completely dead, but it's unclear how much longer they can stay in business operating like this. So. Yeah, it's going to take a lot of uh, dark money. Take a lot of oil money. Yeah, which uh, you know uh, there seems to still be plenty to go around. Yeah, uh, but let's move on to some news about a slight problem that this country and only this country has: near constant mass shootings. Why do we? Why do we have all these mass shootings? What did I do? Nobody wants to stab anymore. Uh, <laughs> I wonder what the difference could be. That causes the United States and no other country on Earth to have mass shootings on a regular basis. Because we need to cull those feral hogs. Uh, well, there's simply no way to prevent this, obviously. So let's stop worrying about it. Done and done. Thoughts and prayers. Bye-bye. In fairness, though, Congress did recently pass a bipartisan bill aimed at reducing the number of mass shooting deaths that occur in this country. Though, as you might guess from the word bipartisan... It's some real bare minimum shit. And the uh, other side of the aisle uh, got just booed and uh, mocked by their constituents for even daring to support the bare minimum. Rhinos. Yeah. So yeah, basically, you know how we have uh, an Amber Alert system so that any time a child is abducted, an alert goes out to every phone in a pretty wide radius with a description of the vehicle that the kidnapper is believed to be driving. So the House passed a bill to create an active shooter alert system. Uh, that would presumably work the same way. Oh, God, uh, this is going to go real poorly. Letting people know to avoid areas where someone with a gun is currently uh, shooting at people. Again, this is bare minimum shit, and the fact that it passed with bipartisan support means that even House members who are on the NRA payroll were cool with it. But not all of them. Uh, our old friend Matt Gates had a very specific problem with this idea. Uh, here you go. And so one has to ask, what is the true purpose of this bill? Why do the Democrats want to use the power of government to bombard your cell phone with active shooter alerts 24 hours a day, seven days a week? It's because they want you to be afraid of the Second Amendment. 
active shooter alerts 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Oh my God! <laughs> what? <laughs> that's a that's a that's a that's a certain reaction to have to this. Yeah, yeah. My idea that it would be bad would be that people would get the alert and turn into go into superhero mode and head down there with their own guns and try to take out the bad guy. Well, which might be more effective than the police, uh, as I've, we've seen. But yeah. uh, also would uh, you would think create more chaos. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I mean, look, he does have a point. It would get very annoying getting all of these alerts all the time. Gosh, my phone just won't stop ringing. This thing's useless. All it does, all I do is get spam phone calls about my car's limited warranty and notifications <laughs> about school shootings. Gosh. <laughs> How do these other countries not have constant alerts on their phones about active shooters in my area? Your phone isn't constantly buzzing in your pocket? Well, I guess that's the cost of freedom. Yeah. Now, oh yeah, and couple it with... In California, you get the earthquake ones. I think we have one for old people. Yeah, there's like all kinds alert. of yeah. There's all kinds of shit here. I like the silver alert. That's yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. Uh, look, this country ha just it has so many mass shootings that if we were to ping people's cell phones anytime someone with a gun is on the loose, we'd never be able to get anything done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Our phones would just be blowing up with active shooter notifications all day long. Such is life, uh, and that would be you know murder on the. The battery life. And that, I won't stand for that kind of murder. Yeah, Matt Gates will stand up for the right for batteries to live. My phone battery deserves life. As for Matt Gates' other complaint about how hearing about every single active shooter situation might have people, you know, turn against the Second Amendment, I mean, that's a pretty weird thing to say. Yeah. So odd. Why would anyone associate this country's mass shooting problem with this country's massive availability of legal firearms? Two things obviously have nothing to do with each other, as has been stated numerous times yeah. by members of the government, so... There's uh, no, what's the connection? There is simply nothing that can be done to prevent this thing that only happens in this country from happening. Yeah. Just read the Onion article. They yeah. post it every day. They do. Anyway, finally, to close out our right-wing news roundup, whoosh, nobody wants to work anymore. It used nobody to, wants to work anymore. It, it used to be that people wanted to work, but, but now they don't. All of a sudden. Uh, or at least that's the sense you get a lot these days, mainly from business owners who run straight to the media the second they start having trouble filling a job opening, almost like they're asking for a handout. Uh -huh. uh, they blame all sorts of things like unemployment, paying too well, and uh, people supposedly still living high on the hog off of those pandemic stimulus checks that they got two years ago. Yeah. Uh, but it's, you know, it's mainly just vibes. And the vibe is that these young people just don't have a good work ethic anymore. These these. These millennial teenagers. <laughs> These millennials. <laughs> get off your ass and get, and get your first job. Millennials. Uh, there's, of course, a counterpoint to all of this, which is that nobody wants to work for you anymore. And that could be for any number of reasons, like you're not offering a competitive salary and benefits, or you're just a demanding asshole that no one wants to be around. The free market. Yeah. Nevertheless, local and national news outlets, they love asking bosses what they think and rarely ask workers what they think. So... Nobody wants to work anymore is just taken as a fact by a lot of people. And also, uh, the people who take it as fact don't want to question it because then they would have to come to the realization that there's a lot more going on yeah. than just businesses telling them that people don't want to work. Nobody wants to work anymore. That sounds great to me. I already thought everyone was lazy and this perfectly aligns with my worldview. Exactly. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, it's also treated as like this new development, i.e. people used to want to work, but you know, now they don't. Suddenly, for the first time ever, no one wants to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, that might feel true, but, you know, the cool thing about living in the age that we do is you can actually input the phrase, nobody wants to work anymore, into various search engines and actually see whether it is really a brand new notion and not just some shit that people have been saying since literally forever. Hell, journalists even have access to special, exclusive search engines that can scrub through pretty much any newspaper article ever published. The information's all there. For some reason, no journalist has actually gone and done this, but a guy named Paul Ferry, a researcher at the University of Calgary, recently did. And he shared his findings on Twitter. A brief history of nobody wants to work anymore. He starts in 2022 with an article about how one in five executives believes that no one wants to work. Then we jump back to 2014. What has happened to the work ethic in America? Nobody wants to work anymore. It has not always been that way. When I first started to work as a teenager, I saw people work hard. Then, 2006. 
It almost seems like nobody wants to work anymore. <laughs> and when they do work, they take no pride in what they do. Then, 1999. Nobody wants to work anymore. <laughs> They all want to work in front of a computer and make lots of money. Okay. Okay, that variation is actually pretty ahead of its time. Yeah, that's the person I hope... Big forward I'd like to see that on. person's stock portfolio. Uh-huh. But look, we're just getting started here. Yeah, 1981. Nobody wants to work anymore. 1979. Nobody wants to work anymore. 1969. Nobody wants to work anymore. 1952. I heard somebody say the other day that everybody was getting too darn lazy and nobody wants to work anymore. That's the truth if I ever heard it. By gum. <laughs> 1940. The trouble is everybody's on relief or a pension. Nobody wants to work anymore. 1937. Nobody wants to work anymore. 1922. What is the cause of unemployment and hard times? The manufacturer and businessmen say it's because nobody wants to work anymore unless they can be paid enough wages to work half of the time and loaf half of the time. Well, uh, that one's really cool because that happened directly after the last giant uh, uh, countrywide pandemic. Yeah. And it's also, it's like, the like the amount of time they're talking about is probably like an 18 hour work day. Like, oh, they only want to work for nine hours. Nine hours. Oh, they, they don't even want to send their kids to the mines anymore. <laughs> they want to work eight hours and be paid the same amount of money. When they say nobody wants to work anymore in 1922, they mean children. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's true. This newfangled device called the AM radio is keeping these kids locked in their bedrooms. Gosh. Uh, anyways, we're already 100 years out at this point, but it keeps going. 1916. Nobody wants to work anymore. With a bonus, women don't want to make butter anymore. <laughs> 1905. None want to work for wages. 1894. It is becoming apparent that nobody wants to work these hard times. And because all of this info is so readily available, someone else even went through and made a proper citations list of each of these newspaper clippings. Uh, it would seem that Nobody wanting to work anymore isn't really a thing, and it's actually just some boomer shit that people have been saying since a half century before the boomers were even born. And I imagine that you could go back even further and find critiques such as these throughout time. There's a, uh, I can't remember who it is, uh, the philosophy heads in the comments will be able to tell me, but it's, uh, it was like Socrates or Plato, one of those Greek guys, like fucking thousand two thousand bc being like the youth are just not as respectful these days as they were in my youth nobody wants to ponder anymore <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah there's just some shit old people have been saying nobody since, wants to walk since time to the edge of the earth and fall off anymore yeah it's, yeah uh I, but you know nobody wants to churn anymore nobody wants to churn anymore yes and of course now we butter doesn't exist because the women they didn't want to churn anymore yeah I bet during the bubonic plague, the people in London were very upset that the peasants weren't coming into work anymore. Nobody wants to work anymore. Nobody wants to empty my chamber pot anymore. The plague is a hoax. Yeah. It's a Chinese hoax. Just put on that bird mask and get over here. Yeah. J jam a bunch of herbs in the front of the mask. No, get, to get rid of that bird mask. Get that, that diaper off your face. <laughs> <laughs> they won't even let me take the train wearing one of those. <laughs> Uh, anyways, before we move on to the headlines half of the show, this episode is sponsored by Bespoke Post. Mm -hmm. Take your summer adventures to the next level with Bespoke Post and their new seasonal lineup of must-have Box of Awesome collections. Bespoke Post partners with small businesses and emerging brands to bring you the most unique goods every month. No matter what you have going on this season, Box of Awesome has you covered. From camping gear essentials to beach day and travel must-haves, Box of Awesome has everything you need for summer. Some new Box of Awesome collections that look especially cool are the Chop Box, which comes with two very nice kitchen blades, and the Hecho Box, which comes with some very important tools for the perfect taco night. To get started, take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories, and each box is valued at around $70, but you pay only a fraction of that price. Plus, with each box of awesome, you're supporting small businesses. 90% of everything that comes in your box of awesome is from a small, up-and-coming brand. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel any time. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code WEIRD at checkout. That is boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD, for 20% off your first box. boxofawesome.com, code WEIRD. In my most recent one, I got this uh, really small but very functional multi-tool uh, for the, they had it like, it was like the everyday carry collection. Mm. So uh, came, it came with like a small, thin wallet and that multi-tool, which has like basically like a pry bar, bottle opener, screwdriver, uh, everything. It's yeah. awesome. Yeah. It is literally 
awesome in take, a box. Take it with you in the ocean in case any boars come here. Just jab them right in the temple. Yeah. You don't want to be without your everyday carry. Uh, this episode is also sponsored by Factor. I don't know about you, but I think summer is for relaxing, not grocery shopping, cooking, or doing tons of dishes. With Factor's ready-to-eat meal delivery, I can rest easy knowing I can eat well without the work. Plus, they have tons of balanced and delicious add-ons like smoothies, shakes, and snacks that are perfect for staying on track during all my summer, summer activities. Factor makes it easy to eat well for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and everything in between, with fresh, never-frozen meals that are so delicious you won't believe they're actually nutritious. Feel good all summer with calorie smart and keto options, expertly portioned to keep you on track towards your goals and perfectly satisfied. Factor now offers 32 meals per week, including 11 keto options, plus lots of seasonal add-ons. No more eating the same boring dinner night after night. New Gourmet Plus meals make eating at home feel extra special. For an additional cost, these meals are prepared to perfection by Factor's chefs, and they're ready to eat in record time. So you can savor the flavor, not stress the prep. Got a busy summer ahead? No worries, Factor's flexible. Change your order up every week with plans from 4 to 18 meals per week to keep you covered when things get crazy. Factor equals free time. Instead of spending those precious after-work hours hustling around the store and the kitchen, they'll deliver ready-made meals right to your door, eliminating all that meal planning, prep, and cleanup time. Each Factor meal arrives pre-prepared by their team of chefs and is ready to heat and eat in just two minutes. You can't beat that. Factor puts in the work so I don't have to. Their registered dietitians and expert chefs work hand in hand to create meals I can feel good about eating every day. Factor even knows my preferences. They offer vegan and veggie meals, keto meals, calorie smart options, cold pressed juices, smoothies, energy bites, extra protein, veggie sides, and more to keep you fueled and focused all day long. Head to go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird120 and use code weeklyweird120 to get $120 off. That is code weeklyweird120 at go.factor75.com slash weeklyweird120 for $120 off. Links below. And we'll get started with the wildest, craziest headlines from around the world. Yeah. Uh, starting with, Elliot, take it. Boris Johnson signs off with Hasta La Vista, baby, <laughs> as he exits Parliament. Them's the breaks. Hasta La Vista, baby. And uh, there's got to be some more before. Uh, he, I'm not, I heard, I don't know if people were just memeing, but I think he also said, I'll be back. Ooh, that's a threat. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he literally, his last words in Parliament as Prime Minister were Hasta La Vista, baby. I mean, you got to imagine that he's just going to be like a talking head on a, I think a he, British news show I or think something. he still keeps his job as a, as a MP, right? I don't know. Because when you're Prime Minister, you're, you're an MP from a specific okay. region and you're selected by your peers as the prime minister, but you're still a minister. Yeah. Am I wrong? I don't know. I don't know. The British it, political system is fucking batshit insane. That's so why I, it's I could like, be wrong. I, I don't like Donald Trump being in charge of anything, but uh, when he's specifically not altering the course of reality, he had some banger tweets back then. And he still does. Um, mm -hmm. You know, there's a fly there's a in here. big fly in here. It's going to get all breaking bad. Mm -hmm. I'm lose my mind trying to get this, this fly. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he still he, he still posts some funny shit on his truth account, mm -hmm. um, and it's I like it this way. It gets filtered to me <laughs> through yeah. osmosis. Get the best ofs. Yeah. So you know, if it's good, I'll see it. Most of it's not, so I don't. Boris Johnson just turning into uh, a real life Mr. Bean is fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he has been a real life Mr. Bean already. Just in yeah, but in power. Culture. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger's end of days co-star will never forgive him for farting in her face during filming. It's a real, real power move. It is. Yeah, like, this sounds like something Arnold will do. If you've seen Pumping Iron, the man's all about head games. You know, he's all about the alpha moves. And um, yeah, I can totally see him accidentally farting in someone's face to assert dominance. It was a different time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not that it's acceptable and it was bad back then and it is now, but seems plausible. Yeah, I don't disbelieve it. And it is hilarious. It's like end of days, like just one of his worst fucking, like one of the movies he made right before deciding uh, my my time in the spotlight might be coming to a close. I should figure out what to do with my next phase of my life. Oh, I'll get into politics. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, a terrible movie about it's like a, it's like a Y two K movie. It came yeah. out in like ninety eight or something. And they're like uh, the year two thousand is when the devil comes back, and he's played by Irish actor Gabriel Byrne. Mm. And American police officer Arnold Schwarzenegger has to take him down. <laughs> cool. Well, you know, last action hero kind of ruined him for a bit. That's a that's a, a great, uh, you know, only it ages 
like a fine wine with every passing year. It is uh, the ultimate sports. I haven't rewatched film. that, but I watch Jingle All the Way every Christmas. I don't know why you do that. Because it's absurd. Every every scene in that movie is the most aggravating thing you've ever seen. It is a movie that was made by a very annoyed adult. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very cynical like kids movie. It's uh it's like who is this for? Who I don't is know. The target audience here. That's why it's, it's so, not children. That's why it's fascinating. Like the target audience is just like dads who hate their fucking families. Yeah, it seems that way. <laughs> it's fucking weird. And it's and it's like but somehow despite being a total piece of shit for their entire child's life, they can make it up to them if they just do one thing. If they just is, commit a bunch of crimes yeah, to get a and beat up Sinbad yeah. and uh, commit a bunch of crimes while the entire time Phil Hartman's trying to fuck his wife. Yeah. And also, superheroes uh, are real. Yes, and they can fly around. The third act twist. Superheroes actually exist. Uh-huh. They're not just characters. They are real. And they are attacking the city. Yeah. Uh, anyway, man cooling off in bin with cocktail rages after neighbor asks what the hell he's doing. <laughs> Did you see this video? No. That was a TikTok from uh, the, the, the hot day uh, in England, beginning of the week. Oh, uh, well, I've definitely seen videos where people fill up their, like, trash can bins with yeah, like this guy, water and ice. He, he filled it all the way up. He was in, sitting in there with a cocktail. Seemed to be having a blast. Yeah. Uh, and Why not? It's a little pool. And the person filming drove by. He's like, all right, what are you doing? You Are you sitting in your bin? He's like, yeah, you got a problem with it? And the guy's like, no, but why are you doing that? He's like, it's my own house. Don't tell me what to do. And they get in this big argument. Like the guy thinks he's being insulted. Just uh, a bit of banter, mate. The, yeah, it was some serious banter. Like yeah. the guy takes it very personally. that This person's like, what are you doing? Well, obviously, I'm having a cocktail in my bin. It feels like he was waiting for someone to fucking say He's that. He's like, I, ca I can't even drink a cocktail in my own bin without yeah. someone telling me I can't do it. He was probably actually pissed that like 12 or 15 people drove by without saying something. Yeah. I thought this would garner more of a response. But I think he was pretty drunk because he, he eventually gets so mad at the guy filming that he lunges at him and then knocks over the bin he's in and slides just out. spills it all out. Yeah, yeah real shame. Russia says it's losing because Ukraine has experimental mutant troops created in secret bio labs. Yeah. Holy shit. They added the secret, the, the mutant serum. That they, they were created in the Yuga lab. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> we found something in their blood called slurp juice. Uh, Did you know that with one Ukrainian, yeah. you can create multiple Ukrainian soldiers if you use the correct slurp juice? Yeah. A lot of, lot of y'all don't seem to understand uh yeah yeah i don't know this i mean this is obviously fucking bullshit yes uh, if super soldiers were real we would have them yeah hell yeah um it's entirely possible that a lot of ukrainians are on speed but that's Good just because speed makes you better at war it is I it's mean, uh it's just a fact you gotta stay up all night yeah mm -hmm. i mean we i'm pretty sure we still give speed to our uh our pilots at least we used Why to not? give them to yeah, because they got to no, take gotta, trucker meds, yeah, rattlers. Yeah, I mean that's that's what it is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they got to stay awake up there. Mm -hmm. They, they got to. They can't be, you know, zoning out, flying that very expensive plane we put them in. Yeah. So I do love that. Like, it would totally be a thing that you, the U.S. has mutant soldiers if we hadn't, like, technology wise, blown past that option. Yeah, I mean, what's the point? Yeah, we don't no fight. Point. We don't fight ground wars anymore. Yeah, what the exactly. fuck are we doing super soldiers? Yeah. Also, yeah. I'm. Sure, that uh, <laughs> lots of soldiers use fucking steroids. Oh, yeah. So we do have super soldiers. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it is, it's actually like super popular in the army. I remember reading that. Yeah. It's, it was like a problem. <laughs> I'm all sure. All these guys become like juice heads. But yeah, because there's no, like, you, you, were they going to test you for steroids in the battlefield? And be like, oh, sorry, you have to go home. Yeah, You sorry. tested positive for You're steroids. You're disqualified from the war yeah. for using PEDs. Yeah, we want this to be a fair war. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> A New York cop is on desk duty after arresting an EMT who hit his police car with an ambulance door while bringing a patient into a hospital. Report. Yeah, this is uh, infuriating. So basically this cop uh, pulled his car into the ambulance bay of a hospital. They have a, they have a special entrance for ambulances so they can pull that ambulance right in there, wheel the person out. Very easy. Uh, when seconds matter. Cops love parking their cars in just the most obnoxious, annoying places. And this cop parked... Uh, in the ambulance base. So when an actual ambulance showed up, uh, they had to sort of squeeze past. And when you know, when they busted open the door to try to get their patient in the hospital as quickly as possible, uh, you know, they, they dinged the cop car. And the cop uh, was not about to let this pass. <laughs> like, literally just like threw this female EMT up against the wall. It's like, ID right now. Like, motherfucker, I am trying to get, save this person's life. 
What are you doing here? Just, just the like, same, protecting and serving. And like, meanwhile, this patient on a gurney is just like, what the fuck is going on? Can I please get some health care? You know, it really sucks to be a patient in America right now. You got the bills. You got cops uh, stopping your EMTs and yeah. abusing them. You got uh, all the nurses doing TikTok dances while you're sitting there sh- suffering. <laughs> just hitting that yeah. morphine button while they do TikTok dances. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. We live in hell. Or, or shooting videos about how tough it is that they just lost, lost a patient. Did you see that one? Yeah. Uh, they, like, I, they need to ban TikTok. <laughs> There are several occupations where they need to ban TikTok. Like, uh, I mean, I, I honestly, I do believe teachers should voluntarily stop doing TikTok because they are just providing like just limitless fuel to the like right wing groomer panic. Yes. Um, just stop filming. Keep doing whatever the hell you're doing. I'm sure your students love you, but don't film it and put it on the Internet for random weirdos yeah, to like use. dig up and uh, slander you with. Yeah. Or just your st- students. Stop filming. That's not your yeah. job. Your job is not to fucking film. First of all, there's like weird issues with filming other people's children and putting it on the internet. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. If you're going to film anything, maybe send it to like your close circle of friends, if that. Don't put it on the fucking internet. So as teachers, nurses, like anyone in a, in a job where you deal with the public, uh, t- just stop it. Cut it out. Okay, Mr. Authoritarian Regime. Stop it. I thought this was America where I could post all my L's. I mean, if you're going to post L's, yeah. Well, everything's an L. Yeah. Never post. The second you hit that post button, that was an L. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a solution to Japan's overwork. Sleep in an upright nap box in the office. Uh, yeah, so it's upright. It's like a... It's, it's a coffin that's leaned up against yeah, the wall. Yeah, it's an upright coffin, basically. I think you get to sit and, like, I'm not sure where you put your head. I think there's, like, a little something to, like, lean your head on. Uh, and it closes. And uh, I think it's probably a little bit soundproof. I mean... The masturbation chamber. Yeah. <laughs> that's, you know, that's what it's going to get used for. Yeah. Well, where are all these protein stains all over the front of this man coffin? But yeah, this is like, this is a very American thing of like uh, solving a problem by not actually solving the problem. <laughs> like, like, well, our, our people are literally working themselves to death. What do we do? It's like, uh, what if we made uh, upright coffins for them to sleep in? Yeah. I think that would solve it. Uh, the, the, America's greatest quote, the quote that should be on the Declaration of Independence is, uh, why solve a problem when you can sell a solution? Yeah. Yeah. But we're not alone, obviously, in that. Uh, why solve a problem when you can just buy more guns? It's true. Uh-huh. Yeah. What am I supposed to do when the uh, 30 to 50 naps enter my uh, my brain <laughs> within three to five minutes of sitting down at my desk? Yeah. Caffeine assault rifle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Woman caught writing fake Chinese and Russian history on Chinese Wikipedia for over a decade. This story's wild. I wanted to get more into this, but I ran out of time. But like uh, this lady, she started out like with good intentions. She was trying to translate Russian texts into Chinese to make articles about Russia on the Chinese Wikipedia. And but she kept running into the problem of uh, not actually having any grasp of the Russian language and like her translator tools weren't returning very reliable results. So she would just um, fill in the blank, just sort of guess yeah. about like little what, Mad Libs. So it started that way. And uh, she basically created her entire like lore of Russian history, like entire battles and places and people and all of her articles would link to each other. So it's like everything, oh, everything, is sourced. everything seemed really well sourced. Yeah. And like, yeah, it took 10 fucking years for someone to like check something and and have ask like a Russian friend of yours like uh, is this correct and they're like none of this is true this is where did you get this yeah this is some man in the high castle shit yeah I mean like rewriting rewriting uh Russian history yeah but just like for fun as like a creative writing exercise yeah. like I don't know much about Russia and I don't speak Russian but like I dig the vibes I got a lot of ideas about like what could have happened yeah this is my Game of Thrones this is like the uh, what do they call it when they write uh, fantasy shit about characters already that yeah, exist. it's fanfic. Yeah, it's fan fiction. And uh, I guess a couple of her articles were so, like, long and thorough. They've been that, cited in... Uh... Well, they got translated into Wikipedia pages in other languages. Hell like, yeah. a couple of them made it into English. Cool. So, uh, yeah. Um, I mean, probably pretty bad, but the fact that she got away with it for that long, kind of a cool crime. This is not Ru- even a crime. Russia's New Testament. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, here's some good news. New Jersey Medieval Times Union proclaims victory. We won. Staff lets trumpets blare, prepares for fight ahead. That fight is uh, almost certainly going to consist of 
the parent company trying to shut down specifically the locations where this is happening, citing some other outside force. I mean, they have a, they have a pretty good, like, unlike Starbucks, where they've been doing that, where it's very easy. It's like, oh, like every town has like 50 Starbucks. There's only like 10 total medieval times locations yeah. in the U.S. Like, uh, it'll be a lot trickier for them to be like, oh, oh, geez, we need to shut down the New Jersey location because, um, you know, we ran the numbers and suddenly it's not prop. Like, they could still, they're definitely going to try to do some bullshit. But uh, I think they're in a pretty good spot here. I'm excited to see how it plays out. And out. worst case scenario, these people all know how to do these jobs quite well. Like, with a little bit of seed money, they could probably start their own yeah. uh, competing medieval dinner theater and uh, do a great job at it. Yeah. So, best of luck to the Medieval Times Union. Huzzah. Yes. Uh, pizza delivery man rescues five children from burning house. Internet calls him superhero. Yeah, this and is yeah, great news. The, uh, the video this, from this is wild. Yeah, dude. This guy, this guy is a fucking, like, actual American hero. Literal hero. Like, and, like, they call him pizza delivery man. Like, that's his job. He wasn't on the clock. He just... I guess he like got in a fight with his girlfriend and like went for a drive to cool off and just happened to come across a burning building. And it was like, nah, fuck it. I'm going to go up. I think I hear some little kids voices. I'm going to go rescue everyone in there. And like at one point he like got trapped upstairs, like had to break a window and like completely slashed up his arm, like was just bleeding. Yeah. Profusely. When you see the, 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 the video of him, like coming out, basically coughing up soot. Yeah, and like, coughing up soot. His, after, like, the fourth time going in there His to entire heart. arm is blurred because yeah. I guess he just... It's like, Burned, yeah. Well, no, he, like, cut it. Oh, shit. Super okay. deep. He had, like, a really bad cut where, like, they had to immediately apply a tourniquet. Um, he was, like, in some serious trouble there for a second, but I guess he's fine now. And uh, he, he managed to raise, like... It was, like, half a million dollars on GoFundMe. For Good. People were just like, God, I needed something actually, like, inspiring and positive... In my life. Did Thank he, you, sir. Did he break up with his girlfriend? I don't know. That's uh <laughs> Could you <laughs> imagine? What Where the hell have you been? <laughs> Sorry, like, babe. Uh yeah, so I just uh, I saved five children's lives. Hey, why don't you turn on the news? So I don't know. Am I a good guy or a bad guy? Might see someone you know on the news. Yeah. Hmm. Uh sorry, I gotta be up early in the morning. Uh, NBC uh, yeah. I'm doing a doing a thing from the uh the laptop. But uh yeah, you know, you could find uh, you know, you could find another me in a minute. It would be realistic and hilarious if like the girlfriend took credit for starting the fight that got him to leave the house i mean and... he wouldn't have been there if i uh if i hadn't insulted him as a man you're welcome america <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean you know it's, look behind every hero is a, a woman yelling at him <laughs> uh, forcing him into a heroic situation out of pure happenstance <laughs> so yeah 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 equally important he like heroism and spite are Kind of in the same realm. Yeah, the yin and the yang. You know what? Fuck it. I'll rescue some kids. Yeah. What else do I have to lose? <laughs> <laughs> Is that caring enough for you, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> in all seriousness, I'm. I hope things are fine, and this yeah. is uh, actually some great news. Yeah. Yeah. I, I hope they both learn to appreciate each other, and I'm. I'm glad these children are alive. Yes. There you go. Anyways, that's it for this week's episode of Weekly Weird News. If you haven't seen it already, we have a new episode of News Dump that goes into all about how. Zack Snyder and the bot army did yeah. all the meddling online. You thought we were done just assessing the whole s fucking Justice League Zack Snyder situation? Wrong. Strap in. Ugh. And yeah. then we also have an episode about how the UK is on fire. So check yeah. both of those episodes out. Subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you soon for some more videos. Have a great weekend. Goodbye. Bye.